So we are officially less than a day away from the game. I mean, literally less than 12 hours away. And um, I'm not really, I don't know if I'm really going to be good at this kind of video. I don't know if I'm going to entertain you guys. But uh, I decided to do a video on the top five. I feel the top five most important games of the Texas-Oklahoma Red River rivalry shootout history. And not only did I handpick these games myself, but they all have some sort of specific meaning to it, okay? Now let's go ahead and get in our Sooner wagon with Texas Longhorns and Sooners, and let's go back in time real quick. All right, so we're going to go back in time. The, the date today is October 9th, 1976. Earl Campbell has not won his Heisman yet until the following year in 1977. So he is officially a junior at this time. All right. Daryl K. Royal, who was our head coach from 1957 to the 1976-1977 season, um, accused Barry Switzer of spying on his practices, thus naming this particular game the I Spy Game. He accused Barry Switzer and his entire coaching staff of filming the practices. Yes, so we're talking about way before Bill Belichick and them were doing this to the um, St. Louis Rams in the, what, 2001 Super Bowl? So we're <laughs> talking about way, this is way, way before that, okay? And so basically, um, Daryl K. Royal said to a reporter, oh, those sorry bastards. Um, he also said something about, uh, I don't trust them on anything, right? So this was around the time when Gerald Ford was running for presidency, okay? And basically, like he was try I guess he was trying to get reelected, and he was going up against Jimmy Carter, okay, for the presidential election. And, of course, we all know that Gerald Ford... Or President Ford. All right. President Ford is from Oklahoma. All right. So you got Daryl K. Royal, who's an Oklahoma native. You got Barry Switzer, who's an Oklahoma native. And you got Gerald Ford, all trying to get along. So there's a lot of egos involved in this pre rivalry game, okay? There's no secret that Barry Switzer and Daryl K. Royal did not like each other. Okay, so now we go to the coin toss, the honorary coin toss. So, Mr. Ford is walking alongside with Barry Switzer. He's walking alongside with Daryl K. Royal. The fans started chanting, sorry, bastards, sorry, bastards. OU fans started chanting this, okay? And basically, as the crowd got quiet, an OU fan chanted out of the stadium, hey, who are those two assholes next to Barry Switzer? The whole crowd started laughing, even Texas fans. I'm not going to lie to you. I wish I could take a time machine and go back to 1976 so I can celebrate this moment and laugh my fucking ass off. This makes for an epic an epic moment in history. You know, this history travels with you. No Dallas Cowboys fans. Uh, Dak Prescott is not a five-time Super Bowl champion. Sorry, he's got to earn it. Doesn't work like that. But anyways, let's get back to college football. All right. So basically, this game ended in a tie. The first half, our field goal kicker, and yes, I did take notes on this. Um, Eric Lynn, or whatever, how you ever say it, missed two field goals. In the second half, OU missed two, two field goals as well. But we ended up making two of them in the second half to take a 6-0 lead. OU had a running back by the name of Horace Ivory. Everybody knows who Horace Ivory is, right? In case you don't know him, hey, Roy Ransdell, hey, Patriots fans, 1978 NFL Draft, you guys drafted him, right, at running back, even though he only played for you guys for four years, all right? And basically, Ivory runs off a sweep off an option, right? They reversed it, ran it back to Horace Ivory. Horace Ivory scores the touchdown. The game is tied at six. So all they got to do is kick the extra point and they win. Bah, 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 botch snap. Misses the field goal. Or the extra point. 
<laughs> the game ends in a 6-6 tie. I cannot find the footage on this game. So if you guys give me the footage, man, I want to watch these kind of games. These, these games might not be important to you guys, but it's important to me. So if you find the 1976... OU Texas game highlights or whatever I would love to see that game um, Earl Campbell had I think 18 carries for 91 yards I'm actually interested in seeing that kind of stuff that's interesting to me I like college football more so than NFL so there that game is known as the I spy so this is way before the Belichick way before the Patriots this whole Stealing signals and spying on practices has been going well long before that. So everyone says, oh, New England's the one that came out with it. No, they didn't. New England got it from Barry Switzer. Barry Switzer was doing this shit to the Longhorns throughout his whole 10-year career with the Oklahoma Sooners. And he denied these allegations. And the funny thing was, after he was fired in 88, in 1991, 15 years later after this game took place, he finally came out and admitted that he was filming our practices. And guess what? Karma came and bit you right in the ass, Oklahoma. Because that game ended in a tie. You should have beaten us with a field goal. An extra point. But it's alright because Horace Ivey and uh, Raymond Clay uh, Claiborne um, ended up making the NFL. New England both drafted both those guys. Um, uh, Raymond Claiborne was with us, of course. Um, he was our cornerback. Was drafted in the first round. High first round draft pick. And uh, unfortunately, you know, running backs like Horace Ivory, their careers don't last long. He only had a six-year uh, run. He played with the Patriots from uh, 70, the 78 draft to the 81 uh, to the 81 season. And I think he played for the Seahawks for like two years. He After six years, he was done. He had a very short uh, tenure in the NFL. But uh, uh, Horace Ivory will be remembered for that sweep that he pulled on us because he actually threw the whole team off when he reversed uh, sides of the fields. I did get to see that clip, but I want to see more of that game. So if you guys can find that, that would be great. I don't have any footage to show you right now. All right, so let's go ahead and take the wagon trail. Let's go ahead and take that Sooner wagon trail. Okay. All right, so ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the year is 1984. This game is called the Kiss Your Sister, all right? Now, Texas was entering this game at 3-0. I think the Sooners were entering at 4-0. This was the first time that we've ever met ranked 1-2. and And this is only the 12th time in college history since 1943 that the number one and number two seed met up before week six, all right? So you're talking about a 40, at this point it's a 41-year history. Only 12 times the number one and two met up before week six. Okay. So basically, uh, Texas came off with some really good wins. Uh, we defeated, uh, what was it, number six, Penn State. We defeated Auburn, who was ranked number one at the time in the AP poll. Um, we came off some really good wins. OU came off some really good wins. This was still when we were in the Southwest Conference and all that. Um, there was a lot of allegations of bad calls during the 80s. You'll see a lot of <laughs> 70s and 80s was the era of the bad call era. Referees made bad, bad decisions and bad rulings on the field. And it also costed us games, which unfortunately in this game, Oklahoma fans are pissed off because they claim we that we robbed them and we cheated. Which I will agree that there were some bad calls in that game, especially the one where they ruled it a fumble, or they ruled it a fumble on. Uh, no, we were we fumbled the ball, but they ruled us down because back then they did not use instant replay. And you would think in 1984 they would have used instant replay because that happened to Mike Renfro in the Houston Oilers. We got screwed in the '79 AFC Championship game when Mike Renfro was in bounds and the referee called him out of bounds when in fact both feet were in bounds and he had possession of the ball. So, anyways. The 84 season will somewhat be remembered because the 83 season prior to that, 17 Longhorns got drafted to the NFL, which is the most ever in Texas Longhorns history for that amount of players to be drafted in the NFL in one year. That's still the 83 Longhorns will forever hold that record. All right. Um, Oklahoma was off to a 4-0 start for the first time in five years. This was at a time when Barry Switzer wasn't doing too well, okay? 
Oklahoma had three consecutive four-loss seasons. And this was the first time he entered in a 4-0. All right? So, um, it was raining. So, we're talking about bad weather here. The turf was real bad. I'll leave the link at the bottom of the description. You guys got to check this out. If, you, if you're a college football fan and you enjoy the history or you're a long ones or OU fan, you should watch these games that I'm about to tell you. These five important games. All right, basically it was raining real bad. It was thundering and lightning real bad, but it was mainly piss poor down raining in this turf in the Cotton Bowl, okay? Um, OU was up 15 to 10, all right? And now remember, these guys were botching snaps and punts the entire game, okay? Our quarterbacks were literally slip, slipping everywhere. Our running backs were slipping. There was no traction on the field. There were players that couldn't run their post routes or out routes because they were slipping and busting their ass, so Barry Switzer said, you know what, we're going to take the safety here to make it 15-12, to 12, and I'm going to entrust my defense will hold the Texas Longhorns. Well, the problem was on the ensuing kickoff, we brought the ball to the 44-yard line on our side. Now, I will admit that that was a fumble a couple plays later. I will admit that. But the referees blew the whistle, ruled him down, and you can clearly see on the replay that he was not down. He was still he was still up and clearly was a fumble. And if instant replay would have existed, they would have overturned that call in an instant. That's why I can kind of sympathize with OU fans on this when they comment on my video saying, you covered the 84 video, you guys cheated. I watched the entire game. I just watched it yesterday. Okay, I watched it twice. I sat there for six hours watching the game twice to analyze this before I came out with this video. And yes, I do agree. Um, Todd Dodge dropped back and the pass was tipped. It was intercepted by, um, what's his name? Uh, by uh, Stallberry. All right. And the rest ruled that he did not maintain control. However, the replay showed that not only did he maintain possession of the ball, but he had one knee down and one foot. He had one foot, one knee down and slid out of bounds. The problem was the referees were behind him. And there was supposed to be a referee in front of him. And even the announcer said that. Therefore, that should have been an interception. And, oh, you should have won the game 15-12. to 12. That's why some Boomer Sooners fans will comment under that particular video I see on there. And they'll say, final score, oh, you 15, Texas 12. Boomer Sooner. I agree. So we kick a field goal at the end because we brought the ball to the 16-yard line. We had 10 seconds left. We kicked the game one in field goal, or game time field goal. Barry Switzer was pissed. He refused uh, to shake hands with our head coach. All right, because uh, at this point, Daryl K. Royal is gone. Okay, we got a guy named Fred Akers. Fred Akers tried to come forward, try to shake Mr. Switzer's hand. Mr. Switzer uh, ran to the official, started screaming at him, throwing it down. You guys watch it. It's, it's in the link in the description. I want you guys to watch it. If you can't watch the whole game, fast forward it to the end of that video. You'll see the last like couple of minutes. And Barry Switzer is throwing a temper tantrum like a fucking child. So, Mr. Barry Switzer, you cheated and filmed our practices. Don't you think this 84 game is your karma for cheating? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, not denying the fact that the Southwest Conference officials were garbage. And I'll admit that they tend to favor the teams in the Southwest Conference. You guys were not in our conference. I think y'all were like in the Big 8 Conference or something like that. But and I'll admit there were some bad calls made on you guys, but don't you think that was your karma for the filming of our practices in the 1976 tie? I, I happen to think so. I really do. All right, so anyways, uh, Todd Dodge, uh, he had an okay uh, game. Uh, too bad he, he didn't make the NFL or whatever, but, you know, not every uh, player that wears a Texas Longhorn uniform uh, makes the NFL. We're the same thing with the Oklahoma Sooners. Um, the fans chanted at the end when the game was tied. Texas fans and OU fans were chanting, we're number one. We're number one. We're number one. Let me flip the page here. Apologize. All right, so um, <coughs> as a result, Texas finished 7-4. And we finished 7-4-1. So, obviously, after this game, we didn't really do too well. 
We finished ranked 19th. We lost to uh, Iowa in the Freedom Bowl. So the Oklahoma Sooners went 9-2 and 1. Okay, uh, they lost in the Orange Bowl to rank number four Washington. Okay, now of course all y'all wonder who won that year. Pfft, BYU won that year. Okay, and this was in 1984. The Heisman Trophy winner from Boston College is Doug Flutie. Doug Flutie won the Heisman that year. All right, so uh, anyways, um, so the 85 NFL draft comes around, okay? Um, the number one overall pick is Bruce Smith from Vir uh, West Virginia. Or no, Virginia Tech, sorry. He got drafted to Buffalo. Now, he had a very good tenure career. I think he played till 02 or 03. So he had like 18, 19 years in the league. Um... The players that were drafted, we had Jerry Gray. Um, he was a cornerback drafted to the L.A. Rams. First round, thing, 21st overall. Uh, OU had Steven uh, Sewell, which was the player of the game for that 84 game. Yeah, he had two monster touchdowns, was a sick running back. I'll admit Sewell was unbelievable for the Oklahoma Sooners. He deserved the game ball that game. He was the best player in that game, hands down. And I'm a Longhorns fan, and I will admit that to Sooners fans in this video. Okay. He got drafted to uh, the Denver Broncos, at the number 26 pick, first round. Um, Buster Rhymes from OU, not, no, not the rapper. Bust Buster Rhymes got drafted also in the NFL. He was uh, selected uh, in the fourth round. Um, I think he went to the Oakland Raiders, if I'm correct. Uh, Tony DeGray, also another famous Oklahoma Sooner. He was drafted. Um, he was a defensive tackle. The Bengals got him. The Bengals know who Mr. DeGrade is. Um, Chuck Thomas, center from Oklahoma. My Houston Oilers drafted him. Never forget. Um, June James, Detroit Lions, uh, drafted him at linebacker at, I think it was the 7th or 8th round. And uh, then uh, they drafted Terry Orr. Our tight end got drafted to the Washington Redskins in the 10th round. So... That was a pretty good game and a pretty good NFL draft, might ask. I think Jerry Rice was in that 85 NFL draft, and he's a Hall of Famer and deserves to be a Hall of Famer. I think uh, Mr. Uh, Kent, uh, Kevin Green was also drafted in 80, if I'm correct, was a 85 draft. He was there too. Carolina Panthers know him very well. Um, Willie Jory was also in the draft. He sold me my car, my Ford 2011. He sold it to me, works at Healthman Ford as we speak. He was drafted by the Houston Oilers in the 1985 NFL Draft. So He spent nine years in the league. Uh, I think he went to, to Tampa Bay Buccaneers for the last three years. And then he retired in the 93 season. Because unfortunately, again, running backs do not have a long career in the NFL. Especially back then with you know the game being the way it was back then. Versus now, it's a lot safer to play. Not entirely, but you know. You know, you know where I'm going with this. Um... So, uh, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and fast forward in the Oregon Trail. Now I finally got some footage for you guys, okay? The time is now, it's um, 1990, right? This is when everything's getting better, baby, 1990s. We're in the 90s there. The OU-Texas uh, game. Okay, this was a pretty good game, all right? Peter Gardier versus Lance Gundy, all right? So at this point, Barry Switzer is out the door because he left in 1988, all right? We got my boy Fred Akers. He's gone. He's out the door. We got a new head coach. His name is uh, Mr. David McWilliams, and uh, he only had really one good season with us. Um, he coached from 86, uh, I believe it was a 87 season, no, yeah, 87 to 91. Yeah, like five years with us and only one decent season. And that was in the 90, the, the 1990 season, Th this particular one I'm talking about. Okay. So he was only there for five years. He had a short, uh, tenure with us. Okay. But, um, basically, um, 
OU, uh, I don't know who their head coach. Oh, no, they had coach uh, Gary Gibbs, who was entering his second season because, again, Barry Switzer's out in 88. So they got Mr. Gary Gibbs. Gary Gibbs is now the head coach, okay? So that Barry Switzer, Daryl K. Royal, Fred Akers era is ended. We are now in a totally new era now. The year is 1990, all right? So anyways, um, OU is entering at this game ranked fourth, all right? They are... 5-0. and oh. The Longhorns are 2-1. and one. I think we lost. At, uh, Colorado, I think, beat us that year prior to that game. So we're 2-1. and one. We're on rank going in this game, and that's the way it should be, okay? OU fumbles the ball first. So we get the ball on their territory. We fumble the ball two plays later. All right, so OU gets the ball. They're in short fillage. Or, no, they end up driving the ball down. They go up 3 nothing. all right? Gardier throws a touchdown pass to Kerry Cash, okay, which he has a twin brother, by the way. Both of them are Texas Longhorns. Both went to the NFL, spent a short year. Both only spent six years in the league. What a coincidence, right? So we score a touchdown. We go up 7-3. to three. Okay, so we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, we're going to win this game. Um, then they had a, a running back by the name of Brewer. All right, now, Brewer's a beast. He's got this fucking speed runner type of guy. I mean, especially up the middle. You hand the ball, he finds the holes, he runs for the end zone every time. And we he was breaking tackles. This guy was breaking multiple tackles in this game. We could not wrap him up. So Mr. Brewer runs up the middle and puts OU up 10-7. Okay. Uh, OU then later makes a field goal. They're up 13-7. All right. Um... So anyways, um, it's fourth and seven. Now this is what's called the gamble, okay? This is what's called the gamble, all right? The reason why this is called the gamble is because it's fourth and seven. We're down on the 16-yard line. And the announcers are saying, you got to kick the field goal because Texas still has uh, two timeouts. And there's like two minutes and six seconds left. And there's remind you, there's no two-minute warning in college football. Well, head coach Alex, Mr. McWilliams, says, hey, we're going to go for it. All right? Oklahoma leads by six with 2.05 remaining. Gary Gibbs sweating it out as Texas has fourth down and seven at the 16-yard line. I like him to try to get the ball to carry cash just for the first down. Get it over that nine and a half yard marker. Gardeer with time. Throws touchdown. We make the extra point. So we end up going up 14 to 13. So Oklahoma has a chance to win this game. They have the final possession. The final drive, okay? And basically, um, their field goal kicker, Artie Lashair, starts talking shit on the sidelines with Texas Longhorns fans taunting them, going like this. And he's going, no, because I guess they're signaling he's going to fuck, he's going to choke. We are long to 53. seconds left in the game third down and six for Oklahoma at the Longhorn 31 they keep it on the ground with Lewis he gets to the 29 here comes the field goal unit without a timeout Texas guys will lay on that ball as long as they can that's a tough thing about running it there that clock winding down but they're going to get a shot at this one fourth down from 47 yards to win it for Oklahoma Lasher's kick is no good I think it was fourth down at that time. But it was third at the time. They could have went for one play to pass and then just to see what happens. So anyways, uh, Mr. Lady, uh, Mr. Lasher misses it. And the game is over. The Texas Longhorn win. Final score, 14-13. to 13. Now, OU ended up finishing 9-3 and three in that game. So we defeated them for the first time. They had their first loss against us. Um, OU uh, ended up 
um, defeating Nebraska in the rivalry bowl, and Texas ended up finishing ten and one in that. They ended up finishing ten and one, and we ended up uh, winning our bowl game, and that was the end of that story. The 1991 NFL Draft comes around. Okay. Here's all the players that made the NFL. We had 13. Seven from Texas, six from OU. You had Adrian Cooper, um, who was a beast in that game. Tight end, Pittsburgh drafted him. Uh, James Good, linebacker to Atlanta. Uh, Frank uh, Belgians, I think he went to Green Bay. Scott Evans went to Arizona. Um, Tom Brackens went to Chicago. That was for uh, um, OU. And then for Texas, we had Stanley Richards, who was a monster in that game. Um, he ended up getting drafted to the San Diego Chargers. The Bears drafted uh, uh, Sky Thomas. Um, Kerry Cash ended up going to the Colts. Uh, Chris Samuels, our running back, he ended up going to the Chargers in the 12th round. Um, was a beast of running back, had a lot of speed. Um, we had uh, Brian Jones, linebacker, went to Oakland that year. Uh, Johnny Walker, wide receiver, he was all right. You know, he went to the Packers. And then we had um, the other Cash brother, uh, tied in, he went to the Redskins. That's where he went to. Was that the Redskins? Yeah, the Redskins. I just want to make sure that I'm on the same page here. All right, so let's go ahead Right on the wagon trail, which leads me to number four. Four on the list. Four years later, the year is 1994. All right, so we're now in the year 1994, all right? OU still has Gary Gibbs, who at this point is one and four against the Texas Longhorns. This is his last meeting. He gets fired after this year. All right, Texas, uh, we got John Makovich, and he was in there in his second year. Because at this point, after the 91 season, we got rid of McWilliams, and then John Makovich comes comes in slightly after. All right, so John Makovich is our, is our new head coach. He was right before Matt Brown. Matt Brown didn't come in until 98. All right, so they call this game like a rock. Okay. And Stoney Clark, who makes the game-winning tackle on James Allen. No, not Marcus Allen from 82 Bears. I'm talking about James Allen. All right. So anyways, um, Texas was entering at 3-1 and one coming into this game, ranked 15th. OU is ranked 16th at 3-1. and one. All right. James Brown, who was our quarterback, sitting at 6 feet tall. He was no bigger than Cordell Stewart. But that kid had a lot of heart. James Brown had speed. He had an arm. He had a lot of heart. Um, he got his first career start in this game as a, as a redshirt freshman. Um, we got stopped on four on fourth and one on like their thirty five on on their thirty five. We elected to go for it. Kind of a ballsy move by Mac by Man, uh, Makovich, but. I understood why he, he went for it, because it would have been a long field goal. So understandable. We ended up missing it. James Allen was a beast. Uh, he led that drive, and we couldn't seem to bring him down. But it wasn't him that scored a touchdown on that play. It was um, it was Gerald Moore who scored on that drive and gave OU the lead 7-0. Seven, seven to zero. Phil Dawson, everybody knows Phil Dawson is... Um, Oh, you did a really good job of stopping us on goal line defense, having to settle for a three-yard field goal, and thus, hey, we end up having to kick a field goal, making it seven to three. Um, also, uh, James Brown goes for quarterback sneak on a nine-yard drive, giving the Texas Longhorns uh, the ten to seven lead. So we regain the regain the lead after that. Um, James Allen was given a pitch, all right, from McGee. He goes to air it out. It was intercepted by Westbrook. Picked it off. And ended up bringing it to the Texas Longhorn 7. Um, we then end up doing a play action on that, on that next, on two, uh, three, two plays later. Um, James Brown does a 
play action and gives it to Pat Fitzgerald in the end zone, giving the Texas Longhorns a 17-7 lead. OU later on kicks a field goal, making it 17-10. So OU has the ball. It's the final drive. Uh, they're driving it down our throats. Have to score to win. This is why the Red River rivalry has had so much mystique and so much history and tradition and greatness. The reverse. One man to beat, Allen, no! going one way and bring Allen to the back side but watch 55 Stoney Clark here he comes one on one bam the hit 6 1 343 pounds he broke down he gave him one way to run and made the stop the biggest play of his life Stoney Clark just comes out of nowhere and knocks the living shit out of this kid knocks him into the next universe stopped him on fourth and goal and the Longhorns end up securing the victory by getting the ball back. And we end up winning that game. It is called like a rock. He gives a Brock Lesnar-like hit and knocks out James Allen. James Allen uh, ends up going to the NFL uh, in the 98 season. Uh, he goes unsigned, undrafted to the Chicago Bears. He plays a little bit of his career with them. I think he plays like five years. His sixth year, he signs with the Houston Texans. Inaugural season. Learn something new every day. He has to share the reps with Jonathan Wells, who at the time Don, Dominic Davis was not there. So Andre Johnson wasn't even there at the time. So he split in reps between him and Jonathan Wells. Well, James Allen decides that it was a good idea that he decided to quit on us. Yes, he's a quitter. And he decided to be an aspiring rapper. I don't know who pumped this guy's head up, but he has the wrong type of friends he's hanging out with. So James Allen decides to be a rapper on the street selling CDs. That ended up not working out. So now he wants to come back to us on the fourth preseason game. Well, Mr. Don Capers wasn't having that. And Mr. Don Capers told him, thanks, but no thanks. I think we ended up bringing him back. So he decided to unretire. Because essentially, like, James Allen was going to retire from the league. But he wanted to unretire. And I, I just we couldn't trust the guy. He was wishy-washy, so we cut his ass, and he signed with a couple of, like, uh, the CFL teams and all these little smaller leagues, but hey, it, it didn't work out, but the good thing about James Allen is now he's coaching a local high school out here in uh, South Park, so got to give the man credit where credit's due, okay? Um, I don't have nothing personal, personally wrong with him. Sometimes it doesn't work out, and that's life. Right? It's like, if you get a job, things happen. Um, the funny thing about the 95 NFL draft, and I want to discuss that, only two players from Texas was drafted. Zero from Oklahoma. The first time ever in the history of college football that no one was drafted from Oklahoma. Texas Longhorns had Blake uh, Brockmeyer, um, our left tackle, and then we had our, um, our offensive tackle. We had another uh, tackle by the name of Love Pinkley. He was drafted to, I think, St. Louis, and uh, Carolina drafted Blake um, uh, Brockmeyer. So that, 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 that was an odd year in the league right there. But basically, this game will forever be known as Like a Rock because of what Stoney Clark did. Now, he didn't have a 10-year career in the league. He tried to go undrafted to Tampa Bay. Didn't work out. Now he's selling um, these, like, tea cakes online. And you can type it in yourself. Uh, he's in Austin, local Austin area. And he sells them for like 12 dozen for like $24.99. I might support him and buy it. I'll post this link at the bottom of the description if you guys want to buy some just to support it. This is his grandmother's recipe. And um, I guess he's continuing that on, doing like his own little side business. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Um, I would have thought he would have been a beast in the NFL. But obviously, like I said, just because... You're big and strong does not mean you're NFL tough. I mean, it's a different story. Texas ended up finishing 8-4 and four that year. So we really didn't do well even after the win. We lost to UNC in the Sun Bowl. Uh, 
uh, OU uh, ended up losing to BYU in the Copper Bowl. So um, this game was the five-year stretch, they call it. I think it was from 99 4 or 2000 to 2004, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2000. Yeah, 2000 2004. Because remember, in 2000, Oklahoma Sooners won the national championships under Bob Stoops. They beat Florida State. National title game. Okay. So... Matt Brown is our head coach at this time. He's entering his fourth season. Bob Stoops is entering his third season. All right, so this is now a new regime. All right. There's pressure for Longhorns to win a national championship. Okay. Four, we were both ranked one and two going into this game. We're number one. We're number one. So now you got to fast forward 17 years later. We're ranked number two. They're ranked number three going into this game. All right. And basically, Chris Sims throws four interceptions and gets sacked five times. 24 for 42 for 198 yards. Roy Williams had like damn near 80 yards in receptions, our wide receiver. Cowboys know who he is. All right. But 60-something of it came in the first quarter. I mean, we could not move the ball on Oklahoma. There's one guy I remember named Andre Wilfork. Uh, Wolf Fork. Yeah, I think he was drafted in the NFL from 03 to 06 to the Jaguars and, and somebody else. I don't know what team he was with, but he was number 17 on the Sooners. He blocked a field goal. He blocked a punt. No, two field goals of ours in the first half. That kid was fast. We just couldn't generate anything. We only got a field goal the entire game. All right. So we're down 7-3. We're down on our own part of the end zone. Fourth quarter with, I think, less than like three or two minutes and change. And this is what happened. Cannot afford a mistake down here. They got 2.06 to work with. Longhorns with their timeouts left. Lehman showing blitz. There's the blitz. Touchdown, Lehman. Touchdown. There was deflected. And sooner score touchdown, they go up 14 to 3. And we just couldn't rebound after that. The game I, honestly I, I thought I think the game was over even if Roy Williams didn't make that play. But I think him making that play will be always remembered in Texas Longhorns head because you know Quentin Griffin was a nightmare during that time. Also, Hibble got injured. A lot of people don't know this. Their starting quarterback named Hibble got injured. They bring in a guy named, uh, I think his name was James White or Jason White. Let me make sure I remember correctly. It's Jason White, Heisman Trophy winner. Okay, Jason White. So Oklahoma brings in Jason White because we held Hibble to 24 yards. He had a hurt shoulder. Got popped really hard, taken out of the game. Jason White comes in, lights up for 160-something yards on us. He didn't, he didn't throw for any touchdowns, but the kid played well. He was able to re... It was a reboost in the offense. He was able to regenerate the offense. And as a result, um, the Oklahoma Sooners beat us 14-3. And you say, well, Rose, what is the importance of this game? Well, the importance of this game is the flying Sooner. Damn Roy Williams jumped over the damn line and knocked the ball out, deflected it, and Oklahoma scores a touchdown. I've never seen a man jump that high in the air like that. I've, I've, I've never seen it before in my life. Uh, Longhorns fans even give credit to that guy. I, I know a buddy of mine who told me he actually has a photograph of that play and Roy Williams of the Oklahoma Sooners signed it. Now, Roy Williams ended up playing seven years in the league. I think he retired at the Cincinnati Bengals. He played from, I think, 2002 to 2010. He was in the 2002 NFL Draft, which is now... What I'm about to go to. Before I go to that, OU finishes 11 and 2 that year, and they end up beating uh, Arkansas 
in the Cotton Bowl. Texas goes 11-2, and and we defeat Washington in the Holiday Bowl. So, despite the fact that we lost to the Sooners, it was our first loss that season. I think we lost to Colorado later on that year. Um, the, the game before the before our bowl game, I think it was the last game of the season. Um, we ended up winning it that, you know, our bowl game, so it was all good. So I was hoping you guys would sit back and enjoy these vid this video. I thought, I thought I gave fair criticism and a fair critique of these five games. You have the I Spy 1976. Barry, Sw uh, Barry Switzer was accused of cheating by Daryl K. Royal. Ford gets on the field uh, with Switzer and, 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 and Daryl K. Royal, and, and they're chanting, uh, 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 sorry, bastards. And then one person, OU fan, says, who are those two assholes next to Switzer? Game ended up in a tie. 1984, kiss your sister. Barry Switzer accuses the Southwestern Conference officials of cheating and helping the Texas Longhorns, which he sort of holds merit. But I think kiss your sister is another phrase for saying karma got you, motherfucker. 1990, the gamble. A lot of people said, was that really a gamble? No, because we're coming from a different era. If you're watching that play from there, Texas had like one timeout. You have to kick that field goal and hope to make it. If you make it, you're still down three points. OU's got the ball. So there's no guarantee you were going to get that ball back. So you had to pretty much score on that play. If, you, if, if you're down on the 16, 4th, and 7 to this day, you're going to go for that play. You, you would go for that play. But back then they thought conservative. The announcer's like, kick the field goal and get the three and outs. No. There was not going to be no three and outs because Oklahoma ended up driving the ball down a fucking field even though they botched that field goal, but they could have won the game on just running the clock out. So there's, there, it was a good call by Mr. McWilliams to go for that, in my, in my opinion. 1994, Locker Rock. Stoney Clark making one of the most game-saving, game-changing plays. Uh, it was on Sports Illustrated, known as the play of the year, or they call it the play. We call it, Longhorns fans call it like a rock. Pounded the shit out of him. Knocked a James Allen on his ass. I mean, he gave a Brock Lesnar tackle. Uh, you know, now, now you got to fast forward to 2001. The flying sooner, Roy Williams, jumped over the line. Hit the ball out of Chris Sims' hands. Tipped in the air. Was intercepted. You guys enjoyed the review. I hope you guys had an opportunity to enjoy... Um, some of the, uh, you know, little history lesson on the Longhorns. OU rivalry. I mean, there's a lot of games that are good. 1958, 1984, 1981. I mean, I, I mean, you can name any year, and there's some sort of significance. But I think these five games sort of hold some sort of memory with OU and Texas fans because there was always some sort of bitter story or sad story or great story. And then two of these games are ties. And they will forever have meaning behind it. These two games mean more than most of our games played throughout since 1900. You're talking about our 113th annual meeting of all time. So this game is going to be very important tomorrow for both teams. This is not just a game. This is the game. This is just like the Boston Red Sox, New York Yankees. Texas, Oklahoma, we do not like each other. And it's always been that way. And this rivalry will never die. But this is what makes sports so great. Because of rivalries like this. Win or tomorrow. Win or lose. I love this game. I love the Red River rivalry. Showdown. I don't know if you're a Sooners or a Longhorns fan. Win or lose. This is going to be a good game tomorrow. And I hope it comes down to the buzzer. I hope it ends up becoming another great game. Added to the list of other games. Throughout our history. So anyways... I'm going to go ahead and sign up out of here. Game starts in less than damn 10 hours. I'll give you guys a review at the uh, after the game is over. Do my review as usual. And until next time, I'm signing out. Hook them, horns. I'm out.